thank the Lord for what he's done. If, if you're here for the first time, we want to welcome you again. And we just sang some songs like magnifying our answer, which is Jesus. And when we say that in life, if you don't have hope, you become hopeless. And some of us have put our hope in the wrong things and the wrong people. And what it causes us to magnify our pain, our hurt, our problems. And the more you think about what's going wrong, the more wrong you feel. And it just seems like you attract more of that wrong to you. But there has to be a time like we're doing today where we're saying, yes, we're going through difficulties, trials, challenges. It's, it's life. But we do have an answer for whatever we're facing. Thank you, Jesus. You can save my kids. You can save my life. You can restore me. You can heal me. And when I say healing, I'm not just talking about physical healing. Most of us have experienced maybe a physical disease or sickness. But a lot of us, all of us have experienced emotional pain and hurt. And I, I love Jesus because Jesus can do what the doctor can't do. He can heal you of your broken heart. He can set you free of your depression. He can set you free from your anxiety. He can set you free from your addiction. He can heal you of your past pain, hurt, and abuse and give you a new start. He could take the sadness away and give you joy and peace. You could come here frowning and you could leave here with some, come on, you could leave here with a smile. It's, it's possible in one moment with Jesus, he's real. He came, he died, resurrected from the dead. That's what makes him different than any other man. He conquered death. He's alive now and available for anyone that would have faith in him and call on him. He's here right now. I know you can't see him. Just like the wind, you can't see it. Just like the air, you're breathing. There's no oxygen. I can't see it. Yes, you, that's why you're breathing right now. God is here, and he's here to help you with your real problems. Let's give the Lord one, one more hand. We're glad you're here. Now, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be, talk, we're going to be talking about the next 40 days. And I really want you to get the book because you'll never have a better life than you do right now until your thinking changes. That means you could want it and you could even pray for it, which is really good. Pray for it. But the Bible says you're transformed by renewing your mind. And to re really renew your mind, you're, you're going to have to expose yourself to studying something and focus on something that you've never focused on for a long period of time. We're being exposed to media. We're being exposed to a lot, of, a lot of content. But unless you expose yourself to godly content, this is what's going to happen. Your life will never change. You'll never become more godly. You'll never start thinking more excellent. Your thoughts will never rise up. And I'll tell you this, until your thinking rises up, your life won't rise up. We need to get our thinking out of the gutter, the old saying, and get it out of there and say, no, I'm going to expose myself. I'm going to study. You renew your mind. The boss says, you renew your mind. So this is what we're going to do for 40 days, short segments. Uh, there, there was a principle that I just saw in the book, which is really cool. And it says this, abundant life principle. The more I am like Jesus, the more blessed I will be. I love that. You're going to read that in the book. It, it just means the happier you'll be. There's another principle and it says this, to see more, we need to believe, expect, and, and ask for more. To see more, we need to believe, expect, and ask for more. You'll never have more in your life until you start seeing, asking for more, expecting more. We're here to build your faith. I know you're, right now, it looks like, man, I don't think, see how things can change. It's just a perspective. If we could expose ourselves to the word of God, this is what's going to happen. You're going to start thinking like God. With God, nothing is impossible. Let's take the limits off our lives by renewing our minds. So it's going to take some work. Say it's going to take some work. This book might be the most important book besides the Bible. And it's, all it is is Bible scriptures and principles that we teach you anyways. Are you guys ready to learn? Awesome. Today we're going to learn three keys to experiencing the abundant life. Like God wants you to not only live, he doesn't want you to just survive. He wants you to live an overflowing life. 
That means he just doesn't want to heal you. He wants you to become a healer. He doesn't just want to take away your depression and give you joy. He wants you to overflow with joy. That when you come into a room, you give joy. He wants you to not, he wants you to overcome your hopelessness and give you hope and faith so you can overflow and encourage someone that's hopeless. He wants to set you free so you can overflow with abundance and help someone else get set free. It doesn't end with you. It just begins with you. Give God some praise that God is doing something. It started now in you and then it's going to work through you and that's going to be your greatest joy. Father, we just thank you for this time we have to study your word and your principles that are guaranteed to work. We always want to know, how do we make this work? How do we make a marriage work? How do we, how do we make a relationship work? How do we make a business work? How do we make life work? And I just thank you. You've given us a whole book, an instruction manual to learn how to make it work. And you said my people, they perish or they fail or they fall apart because they lack knowledge. They just don't know. And you've given us the knowledge of your word. So we're here to learn it so we don't have to perish, continue failing in the same areas. And we can start some, a new legacy for us and our family. And it starts today through studying and understanding and applying your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So we're going to be talking about three keys to experiencing abundant life. In this book, we have eight principles to experience abundant life. And God gives us principles and they're meant to lead us, direct us, correct us, and keep us on track and even prosper our lives. God's principles, when God gives you a principle, um, they work. They work for everyone. They work everywhere and all the time for those who learn them and apply them. God's principles are not prejudiced. What I mean by that is it works for every single person in the room if you learn it and you apply it for yourself. In Psalms 119.40, it says this, I long for your guiding principles. How interesting that the writer is David. Um, and he's the one to kill Goliath and he becomes a king. And being a king and going to war and, and, and dealing with the problems, not only his own problems, but dealing with his family problems and, and problems of a whole nation, he said this, I, I need some guidance and I desire your, to learn your guiding principles. The fact that he says this means that there's such thing as guiding principles. There are principles to guide you in your life. And then he goes on and say, give me a new life. Say it with me, give me a new life. See, if you want a new life, you're going to have to do life differently than you've done it. And if you practice God's principles, this is what God's principles lead you to. They lead you to a new life. They lead you to a better life. They lead you to a breakthrough. They lead you to victory. They lead you to a new beginning. They lead you to a new start. They lead you to a next level. Does anybody want a new life, a new start, a new beginning? You could have it. He asked for it. In your righteousness. See, there are guiding principles for every area of our lives. The Bible has guiding principles for our marriages, our relationships, raising our children, how to manage our finances, our businesses, how to deal with difficult people. How many want to get the principles for that? Principle how to live a healthy life, how to be happy and full of peace, how to live a devoted life to God, and how to live a prosperous and abundant life. There's principles for every single one of these areas. Now, and this, this is the reality. If, if you don't know what the principles are, this is what's going to happen. A principle that's out there that you don't know and don't apply won't work for you. Any area that you're struggling in or you're chronically failing in, there's a reason. You're not applying a principle to make it work. There are principles. And this is why David was saying, I long to learn these principles so I could start experiencing the life that you desire for me to live. I want you to get this. God wants you to live a blessed life. And that word bless, this is what it means. It means a happy life when it's all said and done. God wants you, and I'm, I'm not saying, well, are you preaching a happy message? This is what I'm saying. When you live for God, it's not a depressed life. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's almost like there's a religious spirit that doesn't want you to be happy. And God is saying, I've written this book, and if you follow my instructions, Jesus said this, I've written these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. 
God wants his people full of joy, full of hope, full of faith, full of victory so they can give it to somebody else. Do you understand there's a depressed world out there that doesn't have an answer. They don't know what to do. They're taking pills to try to make themselves feel better. They're taking drugs to numb their pain. But there's an answer to their problem and his name is Jesus Christ and he gives us principles so we can learn how to live a full life. That's why learning is important. If, if you can learn how to overcome what you're facing, it's good. Then you could teach someone else to learn how to overcome what they're facing. How many get that? This is not luck. It's a skill. We must learn it. Any area we learn and apply God's guiding principles, we will experience God's abundant life and success in and vice versa. Any area that you're not applying God's principles, you will not succeed in that area. That's why counseling can work. Because what we're going to do is if you came into counseling with me and you want to talk about your marriage or you want to talk about your life or we want to talk about your business, we're going to kind of do, go over what you're doing. And we're going to say, oh, I see why you're not succeeding. You're breaking this principle. Maybe it's a principle that you're holding on to a grudge. How are you going to have a great marriage if you're not forgiven? Do you know the principle? God, God, Jesus said this, if you forgive others, you'll be forgiven. If you don't forgive others, you won't be forgiven. Understand this. You cannot have a big, a great life breaking the principle of forgiveness. You can't have great relationships if you're holding on to bitterness and anger. Uh, they hurt me and you're holding on to it. Understand this. You're not only going to fail in the relationship you're in. You're going to fail in every single relationship. It's not because you can't succeed. You're breaking a law. You're breaking a principle. You guys understand that, right? So let's talk about three keys that we find in Psalms 119.40. Three keys to experience an abundant life. Uh, key number one, a strong desire to learn. Say it with me. To learn. He says, I long for your guiding principle. That word long means I desire, I want it. I, ex I, I express a wish to obtain it. I want it. I want to learn. Does anybody here want to learn? And I know you do. That's why you're here today. You didn't, I hope you didn't come here just to check off the Sunday church thing. Because this is supposed to be a school of life. The, the purpose of coming today is that we learn something that will change our life tomorrow. Anything that you learn and you apply and it works for you, this is what it's going to do. It's going to change your results forever. We are here to learn. But we must develop a strong desire to learn God's principles. What's a principle? It's a spiritual law. It's a truth. It's a command. It's a rules of conduct or prescribed actions that never change and always work. I love this. Say it with me. Never change and always work. God's principles never change. It doesn't matter if we're in 2023 or in 1943. The ideas of principles that work in 1943 or they worked, they worked in A.C. or B.C., they work right now. What God is saying, my principles don't change. They work for everyone. They work all the time and they work everywhere. I love this. It's a law. Let's talk about learning. Zig Ziglar said this, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. And he also said this, if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. Another quote, continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. It's not that you start learning, you become a learner. If you want to be a great leader, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to create a value gap between you and the people you're leading. That means that you got to be learning constantly and you have to, this is where you have to get to the point, that you're ahead of the people you're leading. Because they're going to, they don't want to show up to a place where they're not learning anything. They want to show up to a place and you're the place. They want to show up, you as their leader. I'm learning something. I got some value. That's why you never stop learning because when you stop learning, you stop growing. And not only do you stop growing, your organization stops growing. Your family stops growing. Your kids stop growing. Learning, learning. Jesus commands us to pay close attention to what we're being taught so we can learn. There's an attitude about learning but there's also an effort. Say it with me, effort. And I, this is what it's saying. The effort you put in 
is going to determine what you get out. If you're in this room and you're not leaning in and you're not saying, teach me. I need to learn something. I need some revelation. I got some real problems. I need some solutions. God, teach me so to learn how to live this life. Teach me how to live a peaceful life. Teach me how to live a victorious life. Teach me how to over, live an overcoming life. Teach me, Lord. And if you don't come in with that, that attitude, this is what's going to happen. You're going to come in the room and leave the same way. That's how a lot of us used to go to school. Right? I go to school. You have to go to school again. And by the time you graduate, you didn't learn much. And it wasn't that there wasn't, they weren't teaching. It's that you weren't there with the attitude to learn. Look what Matthew, Mark 4, 24 says this. Then he added, pay close attention. Just Jesus says this. Play co pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. And you will receive even more. I love it what it's saying. That those that become skilled learners will not only learn something today. This is what God is saying. This is, you're going to get understanding. You're going to get insight. You're going to get some wisdom. But not only are you going to get it now. You're going to get more and more and more. This is what I'm going to do. To those that really pay attention, I'm going to give them more understanding than those that don't pay attention. We could be in a room today and because we're not focused and we're not pushing in, and we're not leaning in, we can leave here the same exact, with the same exact mindset, and this is what's going to happen. If we have the same exact mindset, the same exact understanding, we're going to go into our same exact problems and get the same exact results. Does anybody want some change in your life? We're going to have to learn stuff and apply it. We learn God's principles in order to put them to practice. Now, we're not here, have you ever heard someone Say this, don't preach to me, I already know. And usually you're talking, you're not preaching, you're just letting them know there's a better way to do this. And they say, don't tell me what to do. Mind your own business. I go, look, bro, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just see you miserably, be fa miserably failing and I, I, I got the answer for you. Let me give you some insight. Keep it to yourself. I go, okay. Okay, well, just keep it to ourselves. But the, but the, but the idea of all of this is that they don't know it because the stuff you really know, you not only know here, you practice it. How do you know you know something? You practice it. Knowing what to do and not doing it is not knowing nothing. I know. No, you don't. Because you're still doing it wrong. You guys got that? So now, look what it says in Philippians 4 9. Keep putting into practice all you learned. What are we supposed to do? Put into practice what we, only what you put into practice works. Already know. Well, no, you don't because you're not doing it. And until you do it, you don't know. Yes, I do. No, you know it in your head, but it's not a lifestyle. Look, keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Can you see the reward? He said, if you practice, not, not, now be careful that you're not a selective listener. Selective listeners, they only apply what they want to apply. You, wouldn't, you would not take that approach to making a cake. Why would you approach it to making a life? Well, I don't want to put eggs. Well, then you're not going to have a cake. I want the cake to look like Betty Crocker's cake on the front of the box. Well, then follow the instructions and put every ingredient that they say. Could it be that you want the life that God promises, but when he gives you principles, you selectively obey them. You don't do all of them. And then you highlight, I did put milk. I know, I know but did you put the eggs? I don't like to put the eggs. You'll never have a life that God promises you when you only do what you want to do. Your biggest enemy is you doing only what comes comfortable for you, but some of your biggest breakthroughs are going to break you first. This is what's going to have to happen. There's going to have to be a death to the way you're doing things so there could be a resurrection of a new life, a new result. Come on. Does anybody want the results of God, the peace of God, the abundant life that God promises? Then follow 
every instruction. Well, I go to church. I know, but there's more to it. You know you have to live it, right? Right? Well, I tithe. I know, but, but there's a problem. You fornicate too. Oh, I didn't have to go there. Don't be, don't be going there, California fornication. So you're, you're practicing sexual morality, which God calls a sin, and you want it not to lead to death. And God is saying, see, you're only practicing what you like to do. You're not practicing everything I'm telling you. But if you practice everything I'm telling you, you're going to experience the peace of God being with you in your life. And the richest person in this room is a person that has the greatest amount of peace. Money can't buy peace. Come on. Positions can't buy peace. Your new car can't buy you peace. But there's one that if you follow his instructions, it will lead you to the peace that you're looking for. Come on. The weed can't give you peace. Maybe for a little bit. But by by the time you stop that thing, but you're going to mess up your whole life. God is saying, if you'll just follow my instructions and do everything you're taught, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, my peace will be with you. I love that. This pe word peace is, is ire irene, and this is what it means, Tran tranquility. You know what it means? Calmness and peace of mind. Not a whole bunch of thoughts racing in your mind. So the, the tranquility of God will be with you. It also means blessing. The blessing of God will be with you. Which the happiness of God will be with you. The peace of God will be with you. But also this word means the prosperity of God will be with you. When we have God, we have his peace. Everyone who learns and practices everything they are taught will experience the abundant peace of God. God is not trying to control you. He's trying to lead you to the very thing that you want. Aren't you tired of the turmoil within your life? Aren't you tired of the stress and the worry? Understand, if you'll begin to hear the word and begin to practice it, it's not a religious thing to do. It will lead you, it will lead you to the peace that you're looking for. God's peace, tranquility, prosperity, his strength will be with you. Does anybody need some peace of God? I'm giving you the instructions to experience my abundant peace. And this is good. Everyone who learns, so we, we, we have a strong desire to learn. But we learn to understand and we learn to apply. Again, say it with me. We learn to understand and apply, right? So everyone who learns and applies or obeys the principles or commands of God will experience an abundantly blessed life. So this is a great promise. If you'll just learn it and do it, I promise you this. You'll experience an abundantly blessed life. Look at the scripture. Deuteronomy 28, 1, it says, Indeed, if you will del diligently obey the Lord your God to carry out his commands that I'm giving you today, I'm speaking to you today, God is speaking to us today, and he's going to give us instructions and then what we're going to do is, after we leave here, we're going to apply the instructions. He goes, and if you do that, this is what's going to happen. Then. Say it with me. Then. So this is a conditional promise. Then the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. What he's saying is, you're going to stand out over all the people you're with. They're going to start seeing that you're a standout person. You're different. They're going to see how your joy stands out, how your love stands out. How your wisdom stands out. How can you expect to walk in a whole bunch of wisdom when God gives you wisdom and you don't apply it? This is a wise man. Is the one who hears my, this is what Jesus said. A wise man is one who hears my teaching, teachings and does them. And a fool is the one that hears my teachings and doesn't do them. The one that hears my teachings and does them, I liken, him into a, I liken him to a wise man that built his house, that built his life on a solid rock foundation. But the one who heard my sayings and didn't do them, he's a fool. And he's built his house on sand. So when the storms come and the winds blow and it gets difficult, 
everything falls apart. I'm asking you, are you a foolish builder or are you a wise builder? Because if you're a foolish builder, whatever you're building is going to fall apart under pressure. But if you're a wise builder, it doesn't matter what hell you go through. It doesn't matter what temptation hits you. It doesn't matter what sickness tries to knock at your door. This is a reality. You're not going to end with a calamity. You're not going to end. It's not going to fall apart. After the storm clears, your house will still be standing because it was built on the rock of God's word. So that's, look at this. The Lord will set you high above all nations. Moreover, more. Say with me, more. He goes, that's, that's just, it's more than that. All these blessings will come upon you in abundance if you obey the Lord your God. I love this. This is what he's saying. I want to, does this scripture say that God wants to bless you abundantly? Does this scripture say that I give you my principles, my instructions, so that abundance, blessings will overtake you? You know what it really means? Is when you start obeying the word of God, blessings start chasing after you. This is what happened. Christian, come over here real quick. This is what happened. I, I obey the wor word. He's blessing. And the problem is blessing runs faster than I do, so it overtakes me. But this is when you're walking in sin. A curse is chasing you. And a curse can outrun you too. And this, this is why you think you're doing good because you think you're outrunning your curse, but eventually your curse matches up to you, catches up to you and you start seeing, experiencing the consequences of breaking God's law. And God is saying, if you, if, come on, don't understand this. The wage of sin is always death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And if you obey my word, blessings are going to be chasing after you. They're going to overtake you everywhere you go. Isn't that good? You don't have to move from San Bernardino because the blessings will overtake you in San Bernardino. Isn't it good? Come on. Isn't it good that right now, come on, you don't have to make some major changes to another part of the country because the blessings of God are right here and they match up with the choices that you're making. Does anybody want an abundant life, abundantly blessed life? I'm blessed. Do you feel guilty about being blessed? Because it's almost like a spear, like, I don't want to be too blessed because what are people going to say? You know what it is? Is that you want to, you want to be, you want to fit in instead of standing out. You want to fit in with your cursed friends. And I'm not saying brag about it, but I am saying praise God about it. Yeah, it's okay to say, you know, when I came to the Lord, I was jacked up. I was broke. I was broken. Everything in my life was falling apart. I was addicted, depressed, and suicidal. But there was a day that I repented of my sins, of doing it my way. I called on the name of the Lord, and he saved me right where I was at. And all of a sudden, the curse left me, and blessings started chasing after me. And now they're starting to catch up with me. Does anybody have a testimony that blessings are beginning to catch up with you? Key number two, ask God for an abundant life. So David doesn't just say this, I long for your guiding principles. I really want to learn. This is what he said. Also, give me a new life. The abundant life is available for all who ask. Jesus is the source of the abundant life and he will give it to all who ask him for it. If you want a new life, if you want a new beginning, if you want a new level of success, abundance, and blessing, it's okay to ask God for it because he's the source. Maybe you were taught that it's not good for you to pray a blessing over yourself. I, I just pray blessing for everybody. Pray blessing on everybody that's attached to you. But it's okay to pray a blessing over yourself. Say, God, bless me. Because if you bless me, I could be a blessing. I'm not saying bless me because I want to have a bless me club. I want to be blessed so I could overcome when I'm right now. I'm in a position that I can't bless nobody. 
because I'm not blessed. So I'm asking you right now, bless me. I'm tired of causing people pain and trouble and hurt. I'm tired of being a curse. God, break this curse on my life and turn my curses into blessing. God, bless me right now, right here. Turn my life around. I need a new beginning. I need a new life. I need a new marriage. I need new kids. I need a brand new beginning. Only you can do that. God, bless me. Maybe you never heard of that in your whole life. Now, understand this. You could fight this message all day long, but there's a problem. Everything I'm telling you is biblical. I'm not just saying stuff. I'm reading the Bible. Look at, look what, look, look, this is crazy. So he says, give me, let's find out what give me a new life means. This word is, a, I like to look up the, the Hebrew words, what they mean. And this, he, this word right here is higher. I love, so give me a new higher. I, I like that because I, I want to go to a higher level. No, it's good. I want to go higher. Right. But this word literally means this. Give me a prosperous life. This is in the Hebrew. A healthy life. A restored life. A life that is delivered from discouragement, death, hopelessness, depression, confusion, addiction, abuse, the past, sickness, and judgment. A life of perpetual growth, joy, peace, and strength. Does anybody want a higher life? Well, David asked for it. You're not going to receive anything you don't even have faith to ask for. Now, this is what's going to happen. When you start asking for it, you're going to start expecting it. Like, If blessings are chasing you down, why don't you wake up every morning and ask God to bless you today and then start looking for blessings instead of looking for problems. Could it be that your mind is trained to focus on negativity and even good things that are happening you can't see? I don't know. Things are going good, but I got a feeling. Things are ready to turn around for bad. <laughs> you're blessed and you don't even want to say you're blessed. I know, count your blessings, but you never know. <laughs> you can't even enjoy a blessing when you do have it because you're so full of worry and anxiety and you have no faith. Your faith is in what you see. Your faith is how, how you used to think. And God is saying, come on, I'm here to change your life and change your results. I want to get you an abundant blessing in your life. But I need you to start praying in agreement with what you desire. Give God some praise that you can pray. <laughs> Key number two, ask God for the abundant life. Ask him. It's okay to ask God to give you a new and abundantly blessed life. There's a man named Jeb, Jabez. He asked God to bless him, and the Lord granted him his request. He went from someone who caused pain and trouble um, to someone that was so blessed, he became honorable and a blessing to those around him, and all because of a prayer that he made. Say, all because of a prayer. A prayer changed his life. And there's only two scriptures that talk about Jabez in the whole Bible. His name is never mentioned anywhere else, but he was a standout guy. And his, his, his actually, if you look at, at 2 Chronicles um, 4, uh, it goes into a lineage of all descendants. And, and it just says their name, their father, who, their children. It goes through, through a whole lineage, boring reading. But right in the middle of that, in verse 9, it mentions Jabez, but it begins to describe Jabez. And he's famous for a prayer that he made. But nowhere in the lineage, it goes on to other people. In the middle of that thing, there's a prayer that he makes that makes him stand out to this day. And he's in the scripture because of this prayer. And look what his prayer was. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed. What is he known for? He was the one to what? He was the one. So maybe he was famous for this prayer. Because, because this is what happened. After he prayed, they said, what happened to Jabez? 
What happened to that pain in the neck? What happened to that drunk? What happened to that guy that everywhere he went, he caused trouble since he was born? He caused his mother, mama trouble. He caused his brother's trouble. Everywhere he went, he was, he was just causing pain, hurt, destruction. What happened to him? Because he's not that person anymore. He's more honorable than all the lineage now. He's a stand-up guy. He's an honorable guy. Now, check this out. That word honorable means he was honorable. It means it's, it's kabod in, in Hebrew. It means he was nu more numerous. He was more rich. He was more abounding with. He was more great. He was more glorious. He was more victorious. He was promoted to a place of honor and influence. This guy was promoted. This guy was victorious. This guy was rich. This guy was abounding. Th this, is, this is what that word kabod means. He was more honorable than the people around him. And it was all because of a prayer. And look what he prayed. Look what he prayed. Let's see what he prayed. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. He goes, God, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. But I understand this. I can't change where I'm at. I want to expand I want to grow. I want my ministry to grow. I want my family to grow. I want to be blessed and be a blessing everywhere I go. But everywhere I go, I cause pain. Everywhere I go, I cause trouble. Since the day I was born, my mom cursed me with, with the word pain. And I've caused, lived up to my name. But God, I'm asking you to change my destiny. Change me from the inside out. And I'm asking you to stop me from being a curse and make me a blessing. And then begin to expand my life land, expand my ministry, that everywhere I go, I cause expansion. Do you not know that when you serve God, this is what God wants to do. He wants to expand his kingdom, reach more people. Come on, expand your business, expand everything you touch. That's what's called being blessed. Someone say expansion. That's why we went from adopt a block to now over a hundred some churches. Because we're praying, God, expand us. And it's an exclamation point. Please be with me in all that I do. I love this. And keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Wow. Do you think that God loves Jabez more than you? I don't even know who Jabez is. Nowhere in the Bible it says who Jabez was. They don't say nothing. It just puts his name in the middle of the Bible and says, this is what he prayed. And when he prayed this, I granted it. So what we're saying is you got to start asking for God to bless you. Ask God to bless you every day. Ask God to bless everyone around you every day. Ask God for you to be a blessing to everyone around you every day. And God is saying, if you'll pray for a blessing and you'll pray for expansion, I'll give it to you. I love it. Does anybody want to celebrate God for just a second? Come on. Are you learning anything today? Are you learning? Now, understanding these amazing principles that will change your life will never work for you if you just hear it and you leave here and you go get in and out and then you just, that's it. You're going to have to be a more of an attentive listener. That means you're going to have to put some effort in this thing. You're going to have to become a student, become a doctor and a scholar in this stuff. Come on, learn the laws of God. Be a, a, a Christian lawyer. That you know how things really work. And there, there's scripture that's precedence. If it happens to Jabez, it can happen for you. And that's what you're building your faith on. You're not building your faith on your circumstance. You're not building your faith on what people are saying. You're not building your faith on a demonic idea that enter your mind. You're building your faith on the principles and the precedence and the prescriptions of God's word. Give God some praise. God has showed us how to do this thing. He gave it to him. Ask God for an abundant life. Ask God to abundantly bless you. It's not selfish. You got to be blessed to be a blessing. And if God says, I want to bless you, why not receive what he wants to give you? And stop saying, I just want enough just to get by. You're not spiritual. It's your, your, this is what it is. Your faith is super low. And you're trying to act like you're spiritual. You need to be saying, God, give me so much fish in my boat that I got to share my city. 
God blessed my business to the point that I could be one of the biggest givers in the church. God blessed me. God blessed my finances. Father God, so when there's hungry people, we could feed them as a church. So we could open men's homes in L.A., come on, in Detroit, everywhere we go, we could open homes because we got the finances to do it because the people have been blessed. And the last thing, trust in the righteousness of God. This is what David said. He says, give me a new life in your righteousness. And all he's saying is, in, in Jesus is this new life. And his righteousness, that, that means his right standing. God is the one that makes you right. You come to the Lord and your faith is not in you. Because every single one of us have messed up. And you know what's so great here? That you can start a new life right now, not based on your record. You can start a new life based on Jesus' record. And what, God, what Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you my righteousness. You know what that means? I'm going to give you my right standing. When you give your life to Jesus, you are as righteous as Jesus. Crazy. That means when you stand before God and your faith is in his righteousness or his right standing or his holiness, your faith is not in your ability, your record, but your faith is in him. This is what happens. Whatever Jesus qualifies for, you qualify for. Because your faith is not, come on, your new life and your abundant life and your breakthrough and your victory is not faith in your righteousness. But this is what's going to happen. When you look at yourself, you fall short. But when you look at Jesus, Jesus never falls short. So this is what he's doing. He's giving you his credit. He's giving you his name. He's giving you his power. And he's saying, now you qualify for every single spiritual blessing that's in my book. Because I've given you my righteousness. Give God some praise. You got to start getting this. I qualify because of Jesus. I don't come in my name. I come in his name. I come with his record. I come with his credit. I come with his power. This is why your faith cannot grow if you're trying to receive based on how good you are. Because I don't receive in my name. I receive, ask anything in my name. Use my credit. Does anybody here have bad credit? I just, no, you don't have to raise it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, but, but you got bad credit. It's kind of like you don't want to like even show it to nobody. But, if, but this is what God's saying. You don't even need, I won't even co-sign for you. I'm gonna, it's going to be my credit. And I qualify for everything. And if I qualify for everything, you qualify for everything. Come on, give God some praise. He's a good God. And this is the last thing. This found in Jesus. Trust in his righteousness. And in in Proverbs 21, 20, we're done. God promises everyone that pursues righteousness and love will experience an abundant and prosperous life. Now, I want you to get this. God makes you righteous, and then he gives you the power to live righteous. Say it with me. God makes me righteous, and then he gives me the power to live righteous. So, so when he makes you righteous, he also gives you power to be like him. So now you can pursue living right. Now you don't live right, you don't live right to get to heaven. You don't live right to receive the abundant life because you can't earn that. You live right because you've been made right. And not only you've been made right, you've been empowered to live right. This is what God will do. He'll give you desires and power to overcome what you couldn't overcome. This is not willpower, this is God's power in you. And he says, now that I make you right and I give you my right desires, he says, pursue that and pursue loving everyone. And this is what you're going to find. You'll find life, prosperity, and honor. This is what you're going to find as you start living right. You're pursuing my righteousness. But there has to be a time where you finally say, I'm not living right. That's fine. Everybody ain't living right. But, the, but you can't just say, that's just the way I am. You got to say, I want a new life. And you can say this, I can't do it. And God goes, I know. That's why I send Jesus Christ as your Savior. He's going to save you from you. Save you from your bad habits. Save you from your crazy thinking. Save you from your anger. 
save you from your judgment and because of your sins. I'll forgive you of everything you've ever done. God is not intimidated by your mess ups. He specializes in people that have really messed up. He goes, come here, let me show everybody. Come on, you're my Jabez today. Let me show everybody what I do with a person that has nothing but pain and trouble in their life and watch me turn their lives around. Come on, is there anybody ready to give God glory by giving your life right now where you're at? Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss in just three minutes or so. 90 seconds. Now, if you want an abundant life, if you want eternal life, that word abundant life means eternal life. Say it with me, eternal life. It means fullness of life. If you want that, Jesus will give it to you. If you're in this room and say, Pastor, I need a new, be I need a new beginning. Do you want it? Do you really want it? If you really want it, you don't care what anybody thinks. I want it. I need a breakthrough right now. Now you could stay in the condition you're at and, and allow your comfort zone to keep you in the same condition. I'm telling you, that's bad thinking. You know, the best time to act is right now. Be careful that you're hearing the principles of God and you know you should act with God speaking to your heart. And you'll say, maybe next time. Because that maybe next time is going to stop you from ever doing what's right. Defeat that voice and hear the word of God and take action. Some of you have a broken heart. Says, come to me with your broken heart. Some of us right now, you're massively depressed. And guys, come to me with your massive depression. Some of us are addicted and we can't break the habit. And it might even be a secret addiction. You don't know. You're functioning you're functional, but it looks like you're functional, but you know you're not functioning. You know that you, you can't sleep, you're hurting, you're in pain. And also, you don't know if you're in right standing with God. You're like, I don't know. I feel like I'm far away from God. I got good news for you. It's not that God wants you to come to him. He's come to you right now. And he's his extended invitation. It was that you came to him, he came to you. He loves you. He sees value in you, and he wants to give you forgiveness, eternal life, purpose, and he wants to give you an abundant life, an overflowing life. And then he wants to show you how to live the life you, showed you should be living. And that's a, lifestyle, that's a lifestyle of learning and growing and being transformed. That's called being a disciple of Jesus Christ. So you just don't give your life to Jesus. You make a decision to follow him. Are you going to leave here with the curse chasing you down? Or are you going to cancel that curse and say, I'm done. I want blessings to chase me down from here on out. You're one choice away. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ will be saved. He died for your sins. Stop trying to beat yourself up. He suffered. Stop trying to pay the price for the wrong you've done. He already did all that. And then he died and resurrected from the dead. He conquered death. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ today, you'll never fear death again in, a, in the right way. What I mean by that is you're going to know, if I die, I'm going to heaven. I have eternal life. Jesus is in me. And if I die, I'm going to a place where there's no death, there's no suffering, no pain. But while I'm here, I'm going to start living an abundant life with a life of purpose. And I'm going to live victorious. And whatever battles I'm facing, I might be going through some tough ones. They're not going to defeat me. I will defeat every one of them. And if I die, I still win. Because Jesus conquered death, I have eternal life. Come on. You can't, what are you going to do? Kill me? Like, I go to heaven. What? We should be the most dangerous people on earth in a good way. We should be the most bold people on earth. You can't threaten me. Because I already gave my life to Jesus. And if I die, I go to heaven. Come on. I'm, I already gave my life away. I'm ready to live for God. Live to, for somebody else. Okay, so now I'm going to count to three. Very important to respond because this is your action time. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm not, I'm, one, I'm not sure where to die right now I go to heaven. Or you might think, I think I'll go to heaven because I'm a pretty good person. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're, you go to heaven because you're a good person. You get to heaven be, because you admit you're a sinner that needs a Savior. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. He's, that's the only way. Call on Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father, goes to heaven, but through him, through Jesus Christ. So I'm not sure. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven. I want a new start. Two. I'm struggling right now, and I need Jesus to give me his abundant life. I, I want to exchange my depression, 
my unworthiness, my rejection, my struggle that I'm in. I want God to heal me. Someone needs healing in their heart. They need freedom. You've been abused in your life and you've been walking around with your past abuse and it's messed up your life. And God wants to heal you and set you free from your abuser. And it can happen right now. Jesus sets you free. It's part of the abundant life. Let's get set free. It's an addiction that you, now you have an addiction trying to numb your pain. And God says, let me heal you of your pain. Set you free of your pain. And you'll never, ever need a drug again because I will be your drug in a good way. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to forgive us of sins. I want a new life today. I want it. Two, when I say three, quickly raise your hands over this building. Whoever wants it is going to get it. Whoever doesn't, this is what happens. If you, if, you, if you don't act on this, you're going to leave with your same old life. God loves you. That's why I'm saying this. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. I see all those hands. Proud of every one of you. Proud of every, proud of you. Proud of you. Come on, it takes a real man and woman to get proud of you. Come on, real man. That's it. Come on, it takes a real man, woman, and say, I need God. I need Jesus. I want those that raise their hands. Do one more favor for me. Will you come up here real quick? I'm just going to pray with you. Come up here. This is your first step of obedience. You're not only hearing, you're taking action. You're walking away from your old life, and you're walking to a new life. Come on, church, let's give them a hand. Online. Come on, stand up right where you're at. Stop your car. Listen to what God is saying. This is your moment to receive. Right now, God's spirit is going to go into your room. God's spirit is going to go into your car. God's spirit is going to go into your workplace. Right now, he's going to meet you at your park. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there, go up there. Ask your neighbor, if you want to go up there, go up there with you. I'm telling you, because somebody just needs a little help to get up here. Come on, this is going to be, you're going to receive your higher life. Come on, you're going to receive your full life. It's happening now. It's your new beginning. You're going to become a student of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give them a hand. Come on, church. Let's, this should never get old to us. Church, get the book out there. We just started. Get the book. You got to desire learning. Well, I don't like to read. Don't let that stop. Thought stop you from learning. I don't care about don't like to lead. God, give me a desire to read. That's what you got to do. Do you know my wife, when she got saved, she never read one book in her whole life. She hated reading. But my mom told her, precept, that you, you got, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You got to eat just like you eat physically, you got to eat spiritually. And she said, Okay, well, there's not an option. And she said, God, give me desire to read the Bible and understand it. As soon as she prayed, that's exactly what she got. She read through the whole Bible her first year of being a Christian. First book she ever read was the Bible. And this is what happened. She started knowing more Bible than I did, and I grew up in church. God gave her supernatural understanding. It just happened. Get that book. It'll change your life. Renew your mind. Let's pray. I'm, I'm proud of every one of you. Let's give him a hand one more time. Proud of you guys. Proud of you. Okay, you're giving your life to Jesus. You're not giving your life to a religion. <laughs> Understand that. You're giving your life to Jesus. And this is what you're saying. I'm tired of doing it my way. That's called, I'm tired of sinning. And then what you do is today, you are willingly giving up your sin. You know what your sin of choice is. I'm done with it. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me new. And then give me your, make me, fill me with your spirit. Put your desires in me. Give me eternal life. You guys ready to receive forgiveness and eternal life? Let's pray together. Repeat after me. These simple words, I'll help you pray. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done life my way. And it's left me empty, broken, struggling. I'm asking you now to save me. Forgive me for all my sins and fill me now with your spirit. Make me a brand new person. Give me a new life. Bless me, Lord, so I can be a blessing. I believe you died for my sins. You suffered for my sins. You were buried and then you rose from the dead to give me a new life. I receive the gift of eternal life. And I command every spirit of darkness, depression, anxiety, addiction, pain, hurt, unworthiness, leave me now. I'm a new person. I'm saved. And Jesus, 
I'll follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. God bless you, church. Remember tonight, if you've not seen the drama, we got one, we got seats available. I'll be over there, Pomona. Love to see you. Also, I'll be speaking in Spanish service today. Si, si quieres oír un poquito de español, voy a estar aquí a las una y media. I haven't preached in Spanish forever. My, it's going to be, at least it will be entertaining. Just come show up if you want to.